I'm going to teach you how to play Restoration Druid in PvP, with that being Battlegrounds and also all of the arenas for Season 4 of Dragonflight in a digestible and beginner-friendly manner, so that you can hit the ground running. We're going to start off with the stat priority. Now, Druids, and especially Restoration Druids, are notably very, very hard to kill in PvP. One of the main reasons is we have a fantastic array of utilities, defensives, mobility skills, and all of our heals, well, most of our heals, are actually instant cast. And of course, we have loads of hots or heal over times, meaning it's very hard to interrupt our healing because we can run around with all this high mobility, CCing and doing instant heals. Of course, then, the top priority stat is always going to be intellect, same in PvE. And then the second or the first secondary stat, should I say, is going to be versatility. If you don't know what versatility does, it increases your damage done, it increases your healing done, and it also reduces your damage taken. So it's a really great all-rounder, and in PvP, this scales very well indeed. Our next one is Mastery. What Restoration Druid's Mastery is, is that for every single hot we have on the target, so if we've got one hot versus three hots, it means that all of our other heals are going to do more healing for the more heal over times we have on the target. We have got certain abilities that are actually going to put a ton of hots on the target all at once, that obviously being our ally, and generally we're just putting loads of them on our targets anyway. Considering that there's usually, especially in Arena, hardly anyone in there compared to a raid, it means that we can get a lot of hots up on the people that are actually around us, whereas in raid we struggle getting it up on everyone. After that, it's haste and then critical strike. Regarding the rest of the gear that you should be getting, I'm not going to go too far into like biz gear or anything like that, especially if you're a beginner, you might be in your PvE gear anyway, but it is really important that you do try and pick up both PvP trinkets. These can give you a massive advantage, especially as one of them is going to be on use to take you out of any... CC that you may have on you. Apart from that, the only other thing I'll say on the gear is that it is really important, of course, and will give you a huge PvP advantage if you do have your two and four set from this season. For the talent tree, this is the build I would recommend for beginners to PvP, and I will put an import string down below in the description for this one. As always, I'm not going to talk about every single individual talent. This is a video generally for beginners and people just getting their toes wet. But I will now talk about the important ones. We have Scenarian Ward here. This is a shield absorb you can put on someone on a 30 second cooldown. It's instant and this is really great when we're on the move. It does also scale with your mastery and it is going to be a heal over time as well. And therefore it is even more powerful in smaller teams like 2v2 or 3v3 arena. Another one here is Soul of the Forest. Basically, when you use your Swift Mend spell, which I'll be going over shortly, your next spell, whether that's a Wild Growth or Regrowth, will be massively increased on the healing it does. We can use this to get out a massive single target regrowth to our allies in the arena, and this, again, is going to give us a large advantage. One of my other absolute favourites is Overgrowth here. This is going to apply Life Bloom, Rejuvenation, Wild Growth, and Regrowth's Heal Over Times onto an ally. It is on a 45 second, sorry, it's on a one minute cooldown. Don't know where I got 45 seconds from, I wish. It is on a one minute cooldown. However, this is fantastic. Remember I said that our mastery, which I'll read out here, your healing is increased by X amount for each of your Restoration Heal Over Time effects on the target. So basically, when you use Overgrowth, you can see on my Voodoo healing bar here, it's put four heal over times on me. I could then use Scenarian Ward and get a fifth one on there. But basically, Overgrowth is a fantastic way of maxing out your mastery and getting a load of heals on someone, especially if they are being targeted by your opposing team's DPS. If they've just used their cooldowns and they're trying to nuke your teammate down or you down, this is a fantastic spell at getting a ton of heal over times up on them really, really quickly. For the PvP talents, don't forget you've got these three down here. And I would really say that it depends on if you're doing Battlegrounds or Arena on which ones you take here but they can make a very large difference. So I'm going to show you some of the important ones and kind of let you make your own choice on these as it really isn't one shoe fits all when it comes to player versus player. One of my favourites here is Focused Growth. Reduces the mana cost of your life bloom, 
by 8% and your life bloom also applies focused growth to the target, increasing life blooms healing by 8% and that stacks up to three times. So life bloom is here, healing the target over 15 seconds. When life bloom expires or dispelled, the target is instantly then healed. And we can only have that on, on one target at a time. And it does count for three stacks of mastery um, as well when you use it. So when we use this over and over again on the same target, we're going to be stacking up an extra hot on them called focused growth. Another one here is Keeper of the Grove. Tranquility protects you from all harm while it is channeled and its healing is increased by 20%. So this is Tranquility here. It's a channeled spell, as you can see, which could be easily interrupted. And considering it's on a large cooldown, we really want to make sure that doesn't happen. So if you are being targeted, you can use your Tranquility with this talent to channel and heal yourself and your allies nearby, and it's going to protect you from harm. I mean, you can get out this big healing cooldown without having to worry as much about having to channel it and being, of course, in danger. For the third one, there's a few options. Like I said, it's really kind of up to you. There's forms here, which you can put obviously on you and your allies before you go in. Sprout forms for 12 seconds on the friendly target. When the victim gets a melee attack, forms deal damage back to the attacker, and attackers also have their movement speed reduced. This can be really, really useful, of course, mirroring back damage at your enemy due to fawns, and also slowing them down at the same time. Because we are a druid of a lot of heal over times, you may sometimes see that your enemies are actually trying to remove those heal over times from you or your allies. With the reactive resin talent, enemies have their movement speed reduced when removing your restoration heal over time effects, and that can stack. Enemies are silenced and rooted for three seconds at three stacks. So when they're trying to remove all those healing effects off you, we can actually almost um, have that kind of mirror back and actually go against them. And this is one of my favorite talents for that reason as well. And another one that I may use is High Winds. Cyclone leaves the target reeling, reducing their damage and healing by 15% for three seconds. Cyclone is this talent over here. You can toss the enemy target into the air, disorienting them, but making them invulnerable to up to six seconds. Only one person can be affected with it at a time. What I like to do with this one, especially in Arena, is if my teammate is going ham and using all their cooldowns and trying to blast the enemy down, if that enemy has a healer, I will use Cyclone on them to incapacitate the healer so that we can do all of our damage on the selected target. Then, after Cyclone ends... That's where the high winds come in because, you know, they come out of Cyclone and then still their healing is reduced for a few seconds, meaning they're still not as effective. And this kind of double whammy here I can find is really, really useful when you are trying to burst somebody down and they've got a healer backing them up. Now let's look in the actual play style and how we're going to bring it together for different situations. So... Let's say we're in arena and the gates are about to open. What are we going to do first as our opener to prepare for the fight that is about to start? Well, I've actually tried to separate my action bars here into a, free, if a few different kind of chunks. This is our opener here. We've got some utilities over here. And this is our kind of core gameplay we'll be looking at. And if you are looking at my UI, by the way, and you think, God, oh, I want a bit of that, then feel free to join my Patreon, which is in the description below. It supports the channel, of course. You're going to get a lot of beginner resources that I've made and guides that I've written in my Patreon only. And you can also ask advice in the, P in the PvP, sorry, not PvP, VIP um, Patreon-only channel in Discord. And of course, it supports the channel. So this is our kind of opener over here. We've got Overgrowth, which I spoke about before. When we're going in, what I like to do is I like to wait and see who they're targeting and put the overgrowth on them. Because, of course, if you put it on someone and then the opposing team targets someone else, you've basically wasted all of your overgrowth. So when they are trying to burn someone down, etc., this can be really good to put on them. We can then go into cat form and go into stealth using prowl. Of course, meaning the enemy team can't see where we are. This is fantastic for getting, you know, wherever we want to be. And then, as I spoke about before, we can use cyclone, throwing the enemy up into the air. You can't really see it on the target dummies, unfortunately. Um, and then reducing their healing and damage afterwards if you have taken the high winds talent. Now... This is really, really good, as I said, for getting a healer out of the way if you're trying to nuke somebody else down. And another one we've got here is Mighty Bash, and a woman at cooldown. And although it's a poor, and you may think it needs to be in bear form, etc., as you can see here, you actually don't need to be in bear or cat form to use this. You can use it in any form. Invokes the Spirit of Ursop to 
done the target for four seconds, usable in all shapeshift forms. And lastly, one other thing you can do when going in, if you've noticed that they're going in on one specific target, is using Iron Bark. The target skin becomes tough as Ironwood, reducing damage taken and increasing healing from your overtime effects. That means that if you are using Overgrowth on that same person, Iron Bark can kind of increase the healing of all those effects that you've put on with it. Allies Protected also receive 75% of the healing from each of your active rejuvenations. And of course, the only other thing we can use is um, Scenarian Ward to absorb that damage on them and get more healing from the mastery as well. So that's the kind of opener, um, depending on if somebody's about to get nuked down, if you're in arena, etc. If you're in a battleground and you've got about a you know, 10 mile run ahead of you just to get to wherever the combat is, obviously we're not going to be doing a lot of this, um, but it's still seen as an opener when you kind of get there if you see that one person is being targeted, etc. Really depends on the situation. So now we're going to go through the actual techniques in the healing we're going to do. First up is Incarnation tree of life here shape shifting into the tree of life increasing healing done by 15 percent, massively increasing your armor and granting protection from any polymorph effects like if you're up against a mage functionality of rejuvenation wild growth regrowth entangling roots and wrath is enhanced it just makes all of your spells better regrowth here is instant cast when we're in it rejuvenation has the healing increased and mana cost is reduced we're also going to be sprouting out these treants when we're in this form and let me tell you they are formidable in pvp i'm obsessed with them when you are in your tree of life you can use your innovate to basically make all of your healing spells free so you can go into a tree of life Use your Innovate and then spam those heals. Use Adaptive Swarm on your teammate. This is a swarm that is going to bounce from allies to enemies doing damage, and it's on 25 second cooldown. Use it on cooldown. It's instant cast, and it's really quite good at choosing who to go to, doing healing or damage either way. Use it. Click and forget, basically, on that one. Then we've got the Grove Guardians. They summon Treants, which will immediately cast Swift Mend on your target, healing them. The Treant will cast Nourish on that target or a nearby ally periodically and last 15 seconds. There are free charges of them, so you can't spam them, but you can use them a fair amount, shall we say. If your enemies are able to kick or interrupt your spell casting, these are instant, and therefore... These are really good at getting up when your enemies are kicking your spells, interrupting your spells, or you're in periods of high mobility but need to get a lot of healing out. You can do this, obviously, on multiple people. They can't really do anything about your treants um, because they're not you. So these are really, really formidable uh, tool that we do have in our toolkit. And then we have kind of just our general spells I'm going to talk through. Swift Mend, consuming a regrowth while growth or rejuvenation on an ally um, will do big healing. So if we have a regrowth, say, on us, you can see my voodoo, I get this red dot. I can then absorb that Swift Mend to do healing to myself. Once you use that Swift Mend, you're going to get a buff called Soul of the Forest, which we spoke about earlier, where a Swift Mend increases the healing of the next regrowth. So we can then use regrowth after using a Swift Mend to get out a massive single target heal on people. You can use it on wild growth, but I prefer to use it for single target healing. Maybe if you're in like a, a, an epic battleground, you could use it on wild growth, um, but I find it much more efficient to use it on regrowth to get a lot of big single target heals out. Same with Nature Swiftness. Your next regrowth or entangling roots is instant free and castable in all forms and heals for an additional 135%. Again, getting a massive instant regrowth out. You can use it for entangling roots, meaning that when you're entangling them in roots, as you can see here, it'll be instant. But compared to the massive healing you get from regrowth from it, I just don't think it's worth it. Up to you. There's also rejuvenation, a heal over time, life bloom, we've already spoken about, and wild growth, which is a multi-person AOE heal, basically. Sonorian Ward, again, we've spoken about, and Tranquility we've spoken about in regards to the Keeper of the Grove talent. So these are all just kind of general healing spells that you can be cycling through and keeping up on your allies as you are going through. Apart from this, we've got a few other kind of utilities. We have Dash here, where you can go into cat form and speed up for a short duration. Uh, when you are in cat form, you can do Wild Charge here, leaping behind an enemy and dazing them for three seconds. This is fantastic. When you're not in cat form, um, it will fly to a nearby ally's position. So it does depend what form you're in for this. We've also got Ursoul's Vortex here, another great Ability, conjuring a vortex of wind at the destination, reducing the movement speed of all enemies within eight yards. The first time an enemy attempts to leave the vortex, it will pull them back in. And again, you can use that in all shapeshift forms. And lastly, we have entangling roots where you can root them in place. Don't forget that is instant cast when you're in Tree of Life. 
And by the way, every free uses of Swift Mend will grant you Tree of Life um, for a short duration as well. So you've just seen I've used my second one there. And when I use my third one, I'll then go into Tree of Life for, is it 10 seconds? Yes, for 10 seconds, you will go into Tree of Life. So be aware of that as well, and that you will get super duper um, form when you, um, when you get that. And you can see, um, you can see that here. Apart from that, again, don't forget to use your Cyclone, use your Mighty Bash, and use your Overgrowth on cooldown when appropriate. And that is pretty much it for how to play as a Restoration Druid in PvP as a beginner for Season 4 of Dragonflight. Now, one thing I want to say is that I am brand spanking new to doing PvP guides. I try and show these at the target dummies, etc., so that you can really see how it works. I think showing it actually in the arena, you know, it's way too fast paced. If there is anything else you would like to know in these videos, remember they are beginner guides, um, but if there is anything else you think I've missed or you would like to see in future PvP guides, do let me know. Um, when I first on my PvE guides back in November for Season 3, you know, they were half the quality that they are now. Um, although I had really good feedback on them, you know, there's been a lot of improvements since Season 3 going into Season 4. So, you know, being it my first time in PvP, I want to make sure that I'm giving out the guides that, that you want and the information you feel is important to you. And if you are looking for other PvP guides, there is a playlist here for all the classes I will be covering in Season 4 of Dragonflight. And again, if you need any more help, if you want my UI or any of my other resources, feel free to join my Patreon to support the channel or join the Discord where we can help you out in there as well.